Meanwhile, I'll uh, look for a terminal. So I have another look at the uh, resource use now. <laughs> the, uh, you see here the CPU usage is uh, through the roof all the time. Because uh, if you start to do normal uh, desktop tasks, it's really uh, underpowered. So it's using a 75 uh, MB with a, a WebKit browser open, so that's really quite good. But uh, it's really the, the power of the CPU and, uh, and somewhat the video that makes it slow. Normal. I have no idea what happened to hours news. Yes, the same for hours news. Dot com. Oh, I did Orica. Oh, yeah, that's. I went to the wrong one. Oh, yeah. you, you would have seen that it was uh, more sluggish. And hours news is also a, a, a tech nerd site, so it's uh, fairly efficient. So if you go to the real news sites, it becomes really very slow. I'll give an idea of what's in here. It's uh, standard uh, Debian stuff, but uh, with LXDE, so uh, as efficient as possible. And their education goal, uh, their idea is to put in uh, Squeak and uh, I think Scratch on top of it, so that's built in Smalltalk. So that's really very classic uh, Alan K work uh, right from the 70s, but in the most modern versions. I hear a very uh, efficient NetServe web browser that started out on RiscOS. And RiscOS in the 80s was the first operating system for ARM CPUs. It was developed together. So there's uh, a lot of classic stuff in here on top of uh, an optimized Debian. So it's not that bad, but I have something better for you. It won't really uh, shut down, but it goes back to the console. And now I have to use SuperDo for power off. Because I'm not the root user here. Now this all takes longer to start up and, uh, and shut down than the, the Arch Linux. But it's very, this is the of official uh, Linux that's uh, that they uh, like you to use. But there are uh, quite a few more distros adapted for it already. Arch Linux was shutting down in 10 seconds, so this really takes longer. I think 30 or something. So, next. This is actually built on the same base as uh, the Rasp and Debian. But this is uh, Bodhi Linux. Anyone heard of that? It's fairly new, I think a uh, year and a half or two years old distro. Uh, with uh, Ubuntu with uh, Enlightenment, the Enlightenment libraries and desktop on top of it. So much more efficient and more, much more graphics oriented by all the Amiga people. Uh, but for this uh, uh, Raspberry version, they used uh, Debian, exactly because Ubuntu doesn't support this hardware anymore. So they did, did the same uh, Bodhi Linux uh, stuff on top, they put it on this Raspberry and Debian. So this is Bodhi Linux for the Raspberry, or for, for ARM, but uh, somewhat specifically the Raspberry. Okay. And, uh, uh, I think you, did you see that it started faster? So somehow they optimized the, the Raspbian uh, distro, probably threw out some stuff. 
But in general, Bodhi Linux is uh, very fast, and the enlightenment is much faster than the other toolkits, uh, GTK and Qt with the desktops on top. And it has uh, very nice graphical uh, effects. And uh, here you, uh, you start forgetting that you're on an underpowered machine. And I know that Syllable, our, our project, would be even faster if it were ported to ARM, but this comes close. It really, uh, including all sorts of graphical effects, it, uh, it, uh, it responds quite fluidly. It looks nice. Yeah, they have extra graphics effects. These are all the mega people. <laughs> they even have their own uh, terminal with uh, with extra effects. See if uh, if you if if you make a mistake, uh, it flashes red. So even the terminal has graphical effects, and the the, the cursor throbs. If you go into graphics land, then the, the people in that scene have their own terminology. So this is a, a throbber, I think, a cursor. I hope I say that right. And uh, yeah, this starts in the graphical desktop with uh, 45 megabytes, so it's all still quite efficient. Um, Same uh, Midori web browser for comparison. You can see uh, those are really big programs, so it takes a while to start, but not excessively. We try OSnews.com. Yeah. So that's the right one. So it's all a bit sluggish if you start to do uh, heavy things. But it's acceptable. But uh, for example, the Scratch in the other uh, distribution, the small talk thing, uh, it's very sluggish and people on the forum say that it's unusable. And I started to hear, to, I tried to start Squeak, but it wouldn't even start. It hung 100% CPU for minutes, so I had to restart the machine. So it's really not that, uh, that great, because the software has allowed itself to become very bloated. So we're working on an alternative. Our uh, red programming language. And uh, for Intel, uh, I've written a lot of uh, bindings to uh, standard open source libraries in the past year and a half and made some uh, small uh, sample programs. And uh, most of these don't work yet on ARM, but it's just a matter of uh, a, a bit more debugging. So I have a few things here uh, that work. The uh, standard uh, hello program. Uh, a touch of color added. Um, a small uh, Fibonacci uh, math uh, program to, uh, to uh, test uh, speed. And I think this is roughly about 10 times as slow as, uh, as a regular uh, somewhat old desktop. So uh, that sort of that reflects that this should be equivalent to a Pentium 300. So then you get 10, 20 times slower than a, a modern PC somewhere on that order. And I wrote a, a binding to a SDL. This is a, a small a paint program uh, written with it. And this is a 640 by 480 screen, so we're really at a low resolution here. And you can simply uh, click the mouse uh, to draw, programmed in uh, SDL in uh, the red language. And it takes a uh, command line argument. You can start it with a picture loaded. So 
those are really very simple examples to test those bindings. Right, now look again at what that was. The uh, Peter Paint, the Paint program is 22, 23 kilobytes. Well, uh, that, that doesn't sound like a modern desktop application. That sounds like an, an, a small embedded application that you could run on this Raspberry very efficiently. Because something like this Midori web browser, that's 20 megabytes or something. So this is 20 kilobytes. So that's really a very different order. That's that's three orders of magnitude, mathematically said. But isn't it quite big for a red program? Mm, well, you could strip it down even smaller, but that's uh, is is an SDL in it uh, in the 22 kilobytes? No, no, no. S SDL is uh, those are libraries of a few hundred kilobytes that are in this Linux somewhere. So uh, uh, the performance is really uh, targeted at, uh, at this sort of uh, equipment. And here's, for example, it doesn't run here because it uh, only runs on internet so far, but here I've got uh, my own web browser, also a WebKit web browser, because you just bind the WebKit library. So the Medora that, that we saw starting in five seconds or so, uh, somewhat equivalent to my own web browser in 36 kilobytes. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit bigger than you're used to because uh, 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 when you compile to ARM the code gets almost twice as big because the ARM instruction set is sufficient in simplicity in the processor uh, but not in the, in the size of the, of, the, of the binary code. So BUS is used to, to see a somewhat smaller uh, binary, so that's true. But even at 20 kilobytes, here's 36 kilobytes for, uh, for a web browser because it wraps the WebKit library. And uh, that would be 22 kilobytes on Intel, that's true. But does it run, the browser? No, not here. And uh, the Hello program, that is here, 9.5 kilobytes, so that's almost the minimum program that you could write. So the minimum program on Intel generates about 5 kilobytes currently. And the minimum program uh, on, on ARM generates nine and a half, ten, almost twice as big. So uh, that's that's the baseline where you start in efficiency. And this is programmed in Red System in the C-like uh, language. But since uh, a month or so, uh, the first code has been released for uh, for Red, the high-level language, and uh, that's going to be really a high-level dynamic language, <coughs> even more dynamic than Smalltalk. <coughs> And it's, it's strongly inspired by Rebel. And since this is a, a hardware crowd, I'll have to assume that nobody has ever heard of Rebel. And that's a programming language of about 15 years old. But it has the same ancient roots because uh, you have Amigas here. So you should know the name of Carl Sassenrat. Ah, he knows. <laughs> Carl Sassenrat, the chief designer of the Amiga operating system. He wrote the uh, exec, the kernel, which is now called a microkernel, but at the time, uh, early 80s, it wasn't even called a microkernel. And uh, uh, the Amiga, and he, he designed the rest of the operating system, which was made by a team, but he was the chief des designer. And after Amiga, he went on to, to design the rebel programming language. He had been thinking about it for 20 years, and then uh, the project uh, ran for 15 years. But it's in shambles because it has, still hasn't been open sourced. And just uh, last week, uh, Carl has decided to finally open source Rebel. But we've already, yeah, two weeks ago at Software Freedom Day, I said that maybe in the next month or so it will be open sourced. Well, the decision has been made yet, and now there's an enormous fight over which license. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, a year and a half ago, we were so fed up with that situation that we, uh, we, uh, the guy in, in Paris who's now in Montenegro, he started on uh, on Red, and uh, it's uh, it's better than Rebel. The the, the, the design is better. It's a step further advanced. Uh, Rebel is an interpreter, so uh, it's not as efficient as this. It is much bigger, and uh, in terms of current software, Rebel is very small. Uh, the the Terminal code interpreter is uh, a few hundred kilobytes, 
and there's a cross-platform graphical environment in it that's relatively very easy to program uh, that's under one megabyte but still that's an interpreter so you always need that interpreter in your system uh, to, to execute that code but uh, red is a compiler so it compiles to machine code and after that you don't need any interpreter or you don't need the compiler anymore and then you end up with these executables of a few tens of kilobytes and uh, red is now getting a bigger runtime because it's the high level language so uh, red will probably end up uh, generating executables of a few hundred kilobytes a bit in the order of uh, of rebel but it's all going to be uh, remain very very small and very efficient now I have a USB stick with source code so I'd like to very quickly show you how the programming looks could you uh, end it after that? yeah and then I'll end it <laughs> uh, oh the USB is also here of course I have a second port so should be no problem, except that it does something that it's not supposed to. It's see, it, th th this is uh, this is something like those power problems I told about. This this must be this. It's not supposed to do that, of course. I just <laughs> stuck in an extra USB stick, and it reboots. So it sounds to me like a power problem. I hope I can mount it here, but I only see it's on... Oh wait, I, wait a minute, I already had it on this machine. I prepared more uh, this night than I remember. <laughs> Here's my uh, C library binding, which has the basic examples. Here's the uh, hello-like program, but the one you saw is this one. I hope it has, I think it has an editor. Not the school bar to the right. I thought leafpad was in here. Ah, leafpad. You see the, the scrolling is all very fluid in Enlightenment. Uh, click on the open button. Yeah, I tried to double click, but uh, regularly it doesn't respond very well to the mouse. So this is, uh, oh, this is another hello world. This is a newer hello world. This is uh, where we're trying Unicode. So this is actually for red. But uh, the version for red system that you saw running is uh, quite similar, except that it has some loop examples to get the multiple lines in the red color. But this is what it looks like. It's all very, very clean and uh, very little uh, punctuation, very little uh, unnecessary stuff. I think you can understand that print line and then the text to print. And then here you have uh, Greek and uh, Chinese. The Chinese fonts are even installed uh, on this Linux. And this is uh, Czech. And it starts here on top with uh, some metadata, which is in the same format as the rest of the program. Is it, is it Czech because they have Czech fonts? No, that's just a uh, European uh, Latin extension. Okay. It's not, not very special. The Greek and especially Chinese are not always available. Uh, here's the uh, Fibonacci example that we saw. I wrote it for eight different uh, programming languages to compare, and here's the, uh, the red system version. Again, the, uh, the metadata, you can leave that out, but the red system header uh, is essential because that's how it uh, detects the, what language it is. And here you see it uh, including my uh, binding with the C library, standard C library looks very much like a C to keep it familiar. 
uh, the define also a C like. So uh, for this example, we compute uh, Fibonacci of a fixed number 35 because that has a, a nice range in how long it takes to compute. And then here's the core Fibonacci function, uh, function that you know from uh, elementary programming courses and mathematics. And then here is just the, uh, the timing uh, around it and uh, the printing of how long it took. So that's what a, a red system program looks like. And this looks very much like Rebel. This is a very low level language at the same level as C. But uh, my opinion is that it's uh, much more readable. Especially uh, function definitions. It's in, in general, it's supposed to be very short, but the, the function definition is usually a bit longer than in C, because C is very terse in, uh, in, uh, in type definitions. And if you write it a bit uh, more extensive with normal English words, uh, then mere mortals uh, will still uh, understand what it means. And uh, red is going to look very much like it, but it's going to be a high-level language with all sorts of uh, data types and data structures uh, built in, blocks and uh, lists and, uh, and hash maps and uh, stuff like that. And, uh, and special Rebel data types such as email and URL, because uh, normal human things are data types in Rebel. You can write an, an email address just as is, and you can write a, a web URL just as is. And uh, we think of that now as a human something, but five years ago people had to be explained what that was, a URL in a TV advertisement or something. But now people recognize that and uh, there's a, an internet RFC for how they should be structured. So the computer can recognize email and URL just like a human, so why put it in a string? Those are just data types in Rebel. And that's what we're making now in RED. So uh, Red System is already uh, usable, just not debugged on ARM yet. But all those examples you saw in that list uh, work on Intel. And now that I got my Raspberry working, I'm going to send in bug reports for uh, the ARM versions. So uh, in a few weeks, few weeks, this will also work on ARM. And uh, in the meantime, we're building the high-level language on top of it. And that's slowly starting to become useful now. So. Uh, Right now you can use Red System, and in a few weeks you'll be able to use it on very small ARM boards, and in half a year or so you'll be able to start programming with the high-level Red language, which is still very, very, very efficient compared to other systems. So, let's leave it at that. Any, any, any more questions? And any, any thoughts? Boring? <laughs> 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 so you, so you compared some different Linuxes. Um, yeah. And your, your own syllable operating system? Well, I didn't show that, but I showed the website. Well, okay. So where would you place Android in that list? And oh, that's, Android? that's an interesting question, because uh, Android is Linux, but not really because they sort of forked it about eight years ago or so. So uh, the, uh, they built it on the Linux kernel, but it's heavily modified, and they're, uh, they're having a tug of war uh, whether or not it should go into the standard Linux kernel. Uh, so if you run Android, uh, here you see that it's real Linux, and stuff just works if you can port it to ARM, and that's usually not a problem. But on Android, the entire environment is different. You all only have Linux underneath, but it's modified, so it's a problem for the kernel developers. But uh, the software that you run on top, it doesn't really matter that it's Linux, because you're supposed to run uh, in, uh, in Dalvik, in the Android Java virtual machine. And it's actually a nice question, because my next project is to write a, a, a red binding with Java, through GNI, Java Native Interface. Uh, so, because uh, the, the Android GUI, graphical interface, can only be controlled from within Java. So, to make uh, graphical red programs on Android, which we are targeting, by the way, um, uh, we have to go through their Java system. That's all very messy and bloated. So, so if, you, if you could eventually replace 
uh, Android and the, and the Delphic virtual machine with this, then it would be much more efficient. Sure. So Android runs on small stuff, but eventually... And, and the, the Linuxes that I showed uh, are more bloated than Android because they made it very efficient for phones for the last eight years. Uh, but uh, a complete red system with some Linux support would be uh, more efficient than that, e eventually. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Eric Herman for his uh, extra raspberry. Thank you. Uh, Kai, uh, thank you for giving this presentation. You, you're ready? Yeah, it's okay. shut down. Thanks.